as we continue our spring cleaning, today we're going to flush our water heater. If you watched our water heater flush video from last season, you'll remember that we borrowed our friend's RV with an Atwood water heater to demonstrate. This year, we're going to do it on our suburban water heater. We're going to use about five gallons of white vinegar. We'll need the appropriate wrenches to get our anode rod out, a replacement anode, white plumber's tape, and a flush wand from Camping World. Of course, we'll also need access to a hose. As we mentioned last year, one of the primary differences between an Atwood and a suburban water heater is an anode rod. Suburban heaters have steel tanks, so they use an anode rod to prevent corrosion. Atwood heaters have aluminum tanks and don't need an anode. We also mentioned last year that we had switched to an aftermarket rod right here instead of a factory anode rod. And the reason we did that was because we had such difficulty getting the original anode rod out of the tank because the base of it is steel and it rusts into place. The aftermarket rod we've been using is brass set inside an outer brass sleeve, preventing corrosion and making it easy to remove. The problem is that this anode may not be properly protecting the tank due to the different material that it's made of. We'll inspect it when we remove it and see what kind of condition it's in and talk further about our choices and why we might choose an aftermarket rod versus an original equipment rod. Once again, we'll be making use of our winterizing kit to get the vinegar into the water heater. We suggest turning off the water heater the night before you're going to do this service to make sure that you don't get scalded by hot water. Otherwise, be sure to wear something to protect your hands from the hot water. Turn off your water pump and disconnect or shut off your city water inlet. Let's start by releasing the pressure from the overpressure relief valve up at the top. Stand clear if the water's hot, because it's likely to spray. Now let's remove our anode. If the water's still hot, be sure to stand clear when you remove the anode. Once the water finishes draining out of the tank, let's take our flush wand and put it into the tank, turn it on high, and start flushing out the tank. Thoroughly flush the tank to remove excess scale and debris. So here's the anode rod that we just removed from the water heater. And here's a brand new anode rod. Again, if you saw our video from last year, you'll recall that the only reason we used an aftermarket anode rod was because our original equipment anode rod was rusted so badly into the tank that we almost couldn't remove it. The aftermarket rod has a brass base that goes into this brass fitting, making it easy to remove. The problem is this. We removed this rod from the tank last year, and it hadn't shown much sign of corrosion. So we put it back in and used it again. Now, with two full years on it, it still hardly shows any sign of corrosion, and we're concerned that it's not protecting the tank properly. This is more in line with the change we'd expect to see after a couple of years of full-time use. The rod should be replaced when 75% of the material has sacrificed itself. Since a zinc and aluminum rod will resist decay better than magnesium, it might best be suited for very harsh water conditions where a magnesium rod would decay too quickly. Despite the difference in the metals, the zinc and aluminum rod should still be sacrificing itself. So now I'm left with a difficult choice between an anode rod that may not protect the tank properly and an anode rod that may never come out again. We're going to reinstall an original equipment suburban anode this year and risk that we may not be able to get it out. It's not a perfect situation. We're either going to have a difficult to remove anode next year or we may not be protecting our tank from corrosion. So we're going to go ahead and remove the outer brass collar from the aftermarket anode. Even though this is brass and steel, I still had a heck of a time breaking this loose just now. So we've opted to go back to the original factory replacement anode rod from Suburban. We expect that this rod will sacrifice itself much more so than the aftermarket rod did. 
and we're probably going to try breaking it loose about six months from now to make sure that it doesn't get too rusted in. Now that our anode is back in place, it's time to use our winterizing kit to put our 20 liters of vinegar into the tank. 20 liters is about five and a quarter gallons, close enough to a 50-50 mix for a 12 gallon hot water heater. Simply flip the valves on your winterizing kit to bring water in through the hose. Take the hose, put it down into one of your bottles of vinegar and turn on the water pump. After drawing all the vinegar into the hot water heater, I also like to draw a gallon of clear water. Now you can flip the A and B valves on your winterizing kit back to the normal position and put the hose away. With the overpressure valve in the open position, turn on the city water and wait for water to come out the top. And then shut it off. Come inside and turn on either your electric or propane hot water. Once the water's finished heating, turn the heater off. We didn't have a lot of scale come out of the tank, so I'm gonna go ahead and empty the vinegar out now. If you had a lot of scale come loose when you first flush the tank out with the wand, you might wanna wait a few hours or even overnight. That'll give the vinegar as much time as possible to break down the scale. With the city water turned off, we're going to open the pressure relief valve. Either wait overnight for the water to cool or wear protective gloves and stand clear of the hot water. Now remove your anode, again being sure to wear protective gloves if the water is still hot. Once the vinegar and water mixture has emptied out, put your wand back in and flush again. Once the heater is thoroughly flushed out, put a nice new wrapping of Teflon tape on your anode and reinstall it and tighten it firmly in place. With the pressure relief valve in the open position, turn the city water back on to refill the water heater. As soon as water begins to flow out of the pressure relief valve, close it off. Now dry thoroughly around your anode and check for leaks. If necessary, further tighten your anode until there are no signs of leaking. Now come into the RV and turn on warm water. It's normal for the water to sputter and foam in the beginning, but keep running it until it runs completely clear. The reason we run warm water is that some Vinegar can also get into the cold water line. We want to make sure we run every single faucet in the house until all vinegar smell is gone and there's no more signs of foaming. Now reinstall the cover, turn the hot water back on, and you're all set for another year.